The Church in Wales, a traditional institution with hymns, prayers and communion. Business has been good for millennia, but with ageing congregations, falling numbers and abandoned buildings, the church is facing a serious religious recession. So does the answer lie within these walls at St Michael's College, Cardiff? A new generation of priests is being prepared for a life that is as likely to include the prison cell as the pulpit. And they're taking their message to the most unlikely places. I've still got to write my sermon for tomorrow. The new recruits are stepping out of the scrum to tackle old ideas. As a woman, I mean, you've got the vicar of Dibley stereotype and then you've got the lesbian stereotype. There aren't many hot Christians. But will the church authorities embrace the new generation? I really do worry that the church isn't ready for people like me. And what will congregations make of the young upstarts? She was very competent. What will their reactions be when they try to mash up the mass? In the 21st century, the clergy have to get out there. This is a funny working in barming theatre. But will the new kids at the altar get their dog collars? Talk about leaving. It's, yeah, itchy feet. In this programme, Hugh finds life behind bars a little daunting. But just being thrown straight out there like that is uh, going to be quite nerve-wracking, I think. Roz has a bit of a problem with her sermon. No, and even though there's only a couple of people here, I do have stage fright. And father of three, Stephen, is struggling with the sacrifices of college life. You know, I miss them terribly when I'm not home. This is the roller coaster ride of the Vicar Academy. It's the start of the autumn term at St Michael's College, Cardiff, and we've been given unique access behind the scenes over an entire year. These students come from all walks of life and have been thrown together in a very unusual place, the Church in Wales' own college for training vicars. Nowhere else in the world would you actually get such a vast variety of people. We get 21-year-olds, and we have a quarter of the college that's below 26. They face a massive challenge. The church in Wales has to change to survive. A third of vicars will retire in the next five years. A quarter of church members have gone in the past decade. And over 80 churches have recently closed. Studies have predicted that if things stay the same, the church in Wales could disappear within a generation. This place is totally different from 30 years ago. Industry has changed in Wales, the church has changed. It's not going to stop. And so we actually have to have people who are up for that change, who don't fear it. The first year students are being shown around the college chapel by Vice Principal Stephen Roberts. And first things first as they're taken through the basics of the communion service. But newcomer Ros Forbes isn't one known for her blind faith. So the first thing that you need uh, to bring is not the water. It depends. It, OK, yes, it, yes. So I'll just show you the right way and then you... Know. <laughs> <laughs> no, it looks beautiful right, after a right, right, right. <laughs> Rugby playing, plain speaking Roz isn't the most obvious candidate for life in the cloth. And she's a girl with a lively past. I worked as a door supervisor or bouncer. Um, also worked as a security guard on a building site. I've worked as a model, a nude model. I've got a particular artist, like I, I did it for a class at first and then he asked me if I would just pose for him. I love that, that's really good fun. None of Ros's family go to church, but she came to faith in her late teens. Everything was fine in my life, average 17 year old, coming off 18 kind of thing. I worked two different jobs, everything's great, you know, no real problems. And I basically fell asleep one night, um, woke up the next day and like, it was like somebody put on glasses for me. Before I thought I was seeing everything fine and everything, everything was brilliant, but these glasses had like kind of just awoken me to something else, I was missing something, now I was seeing like a clearer picture and I didn't know what it was. There's more behind this, there's a story behind it, there's a truth behind it. But Roz's main worry is that as she comes closer to God, she won't get close to any boys. 
It's, it's not a sexy profession, I don't think. As a bloke, there's always some random woman in the congregation who wants to get hitched to a vicar so they can be like, I don't know, a vicar's wife or whatever. You can't really start a conversation with, hi, I'm a vicar. Roz isn't afraid of shocking others, and she surprised everyone in an early bonding session where you have to say as much as you can before the match burns out. I am passionate about rugby. It is the best game in the world. It's the thing that brings you all together and makes you put your body on the line for the other person. And the men are really quite hot who play it, so that's always a bonus to watch. And it's really good drinking as well. You get wasted with the people who you care about. Training to be a vicar calls for many sacrifices, and a number of students have turned their backs on successful careers to follow their calling. We have a woman who was the Bank of England agent in Wales, earning a six-figure salary, and another student who commanded the Argyll and Sutherland Highlanders in the last Iraq war, and everything from 21-year-olds to 50-year-olds, and a whole range of people in between. At the annual celebrity visit, there's pictures with the archbishops and memories of a very different era. When you and I were students, colleges were quite close-knit communities, almost not, not monastic in a serious way, but very few families. Around. That's right. Um, the assumption was you'd be there throughout the week, throughout the term, That's right. intensely residential, and the pattern has changed so changed much. Totally, totally, yeah. But in fact, things haven't changed that much for one of the new recruits. Steve Bunting has had to give up spending time with his family, as well as a large salary as a banker in order to study on the course. These are my Employee of the Month trophies that I got. I used to work in a bank called Citibank, and um, I was working there while I very initially started the process. It's just a reminder to me that this was another life before um, the one I'm leading now. Steve's had to sacrifice more than just money to follow his calling. I'm a single father to three children. I've got Ryan, who's nine, Katie Grace, who's six, and Sam, who's four, um, and they keep me on my toes. I hope that when I start ministry, that it will be a, you know a ministry of the four of us together. You know, they they're getting used to now after several years of that. Dad's a vicar. You know, Dad Dad wears dresses on Sundays. Living away from his children during the week has been a challenge for Steve, but he's brought a bit of his family with him to campus. You know, I miss them terribly when I'm not home, and um, I miss the noise then. I miss, I miss the fact that even though it drives me mad, Sam will just come and jump in bed with me, you know, in the morning, in the middle of the night, he'll just come in for a cuddle. You do wonder why you put yourself through it, but then you remember why, you know, and sometimes you've got to be reminded why. There are people in Wales who are putting their money in their pocket each week, who haven't got much money, to pay for me to be here. That's where the money comes from. You know, and I've got to bear that in mind, you know, and realise how privileged I am that I'm here doing this. And I chose, you know, to, to, to train in this way, you know, at this time. But, but that doesn't mean it's not difficult, but I'm, you know, it will be worth it in the end, I think. North Walian Hugh Bryant is another vicar with a colourful past. He's a man with a love of protesting. Well, going along places like Faz Lane Peace Camp and joining the protest marches. I mean, I, I used to sit there all winter waiting for May Day so we could march on London. And just because he wants to be a minister, it doesn't mean he's putting away his tools of protest. Real reason for having a banner after protesting in London with the Met Coppers, um, keep an eye on you is you have a stick if they attack you. But most of the ones I've been on before have been uh, like the big anti-war ones that we had before the Afghan war and the Iraq war. There we go. Has that gone through? So, yeah. That should hold a bit on there. Today, Hughes joined a small protest at the National Assembly against the closure of rural public toilets. We arrived a bit late, so I think most of them have already gone in, but they said there's about 100 people or so, um, which is really good considering the weather. Hugh's home life isn't that conventional either, and he isn't married to your typical vicar's wife. My wife's not Christian, um, Buddhist by tradition, but not really practicing and not searching. I met Rekha working in a hotel in London. She certainly didn't have any idea that this was coming any more than I did. 
think the biggest job was uh, sitting you down and going, you do realise vicarage life means this, and then you just go and bugger off and try it. If we get divorced, we get divorced. <laughs> At the end of the day, that's um, your job, not yeah. my job. <laughs> I mean, you know, everything that goes on in our lives, I've got my faith to sustain me. All she's got is me. <laughs> Hugh wants to take his unusual mixture of beliefs and backgrounds into the church to liven things up. I, I'm a contradiction. Well, I like to think of myself as an anarchist. I, I do have a tendency to like ritual, routine and <laughs> rules. But I, I certainly think that we need to do a lot more to become free in this country. Um, both from a Christian point of view and from a political point of view. Uh, I, I will be as outlandish in my theology as possible because it makes everybody think. And it's only when people are really pushed that you find out what they really believe rather than what they've been told to believe. The students at St Michael's spend a lot of time in the classroom on academic and Bible study. They're also taught the practical basics of the church's traditions, how to conduct baptisms and weddings, and of course the regular Sunday sermon. Roz is soon to face her first assessed sermon, with the vice principal of the college sitting in the congregation. One of the first steps to the perfect preach is ensuring that the voice is in good working order. And like all other first years, Roz has come for a session with voice coach Emma Stevens johnson in preparation for the sermon X Factor. Let's hear you read something and then we will go from there. Okay. okay. No, and even though there's only a couple of people here, I do have stage fright, so I... <laughs> it might it's be right. a bit... Don't worry cool. about it. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was God. He was in the... Oh, I can't even read. <laughs> Tutor Emma is a little anxious at Rosie's obvious nerves and wants to go back to basics. Tell me a little bit about how you got here today. Uh, as in, I woke up at 730 I made a cup of coffee. I had an awful hangover. I crawled out of bed, got to lunch, felt miserable and sick, and now I'm here talking to you. The rate at which you speak, they've said that this is fine? I would slow it down for the bigger churches. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it has time to come back to you and everything. And actually, you do need to slow it down a little bit for even spaces as small as this. Right. Even in the pulpit, how you say it is as important as what you say. And Emma is worried about the tension in Rosie's voice. So the first thing is, is a, just a basic hamstring stretch against the wall. All right, so, um, so this is going to warm up your breathing muscles. What you're going to do is you're going to take a breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. So I'm going to, in this cold, I'm going to put my hands on your diaphragm if that's OK. Yeah. All right, so the diaphragm's around right here. Um, so this is keeping your shoulders straight, but, and it's warming up the right bit. So what I want you to do is to take a good breath in and let it out through the mouth. Because as soon as you can move your shoulders, you're moving the wrong bit. So think about this bit of your body working, not your shoulders, okay? okay? Breathing sorted, it's on to facial exercises. The first one I want you to do is just for your top lip. Okay. Um, and you're just gonna uh, just move it around. And then what you're going to do is you're going to snarl like a, a rabbit. A rabbit. <laughs> I don't that's, know. That's that bloody lip going out there. <laughs> I can't do that. Exactly. <laughs> but what has Roz made of her unforgiving <laughs> afternoon with a hard taskmaster? Quite enjoyed it, and there's nothing wrong with my voice. Get in. I can blag it, I can come across as all confident, and it's fine. The true test for Roz will come in a few days when she will have to do it for real in front of a congregation. He pours it out in abundance. As well as preaching in parishes, the students are sent on a variety of placements. These take them out into the community to a huge range of chaplaincies and projects. They also include experience of working in prison. For Hugh Bryant, this will have a personal relevance. I've fallen foul of the law once or twice in the past. I used to say I don't drink much anymore now. Um, sort of learnt my lesson, especially being married and with kids and having responsibility. I mean, going into the prison and knowing that with my own past, I could easily have ended up in there myself was quite a quite nerve-wracking to go and see these people and knowing that I could easily have ended up in there myself. During his time at Cardiff Prison, 
He will be under the guidance of Chaplain Mark John, who's there to show him the ropes and keep him safe. Hugh's first taste of life behind bars is a meeting with the other chaplains in the prison, which include a Muslim, a Catholic and a pagan. Hugh, this is Andrew. Andrew's a Catholic chaplain. Hugh, how are you? You've already met Graham, who's an officer working with us. And this is Kamal. Kamal's one of the Muslim chaplains here. Um, so we're all on duty today, and uh, we tend to try and meet you about this sort of time in the morning just to work out uh, what we're going to do. I know Ty, our pagan chaplain, is also coming in this morning, so she can be part of that and uh, help out. So that'll be another thing of learning for you. You've got, you got uh, a Muslim who's tame. He's nice as well, I promise you. Um, because everything in the prison service is done in a multi-faith way. Part of a chaplain's work is to keep an eye out for any vulnerable prisoners who could harm themselves and report their worries to the prison authorities. It may be they say something to us that would be an insight. So somebody's feeling particularly low in mood or something, you might um, pick up that they said uh, it was their granny's birthday. I think we're going in at the deep end here, going down to the healthcare unit. And I mean, I know it was going to be, you're going to have to go out and meet the prisoners sort of thing, and, but just being thrown straight out there like that is uh, going to be quite nerve-wracking, I think. Generally, people only hear about prison when something bad's happened. There's been a death, somebody's escaped. So to come in and then it's, I think, you hear the doors clanking, you see people around, and often it's shocking that they see so many prisoners around. They think, well, it's a prison, what are they doing all milling around? So all those kind of things go through your head. Also for Hugh this morning, this is the very fact that he's wearing a clerical collar for the first time must make him feel a bit strange and all of those things. And I think that's all part of a, a learning experience, actually. Just all, all the lads going back from the gym. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Go on through the next door, you'll be fine. Yeah, yeah thank you. Yeah. Cheers, mate. Basically, if you stick with me, you're going to be all right. If, yep. you, th if you feel uncomfortable about something, just, just tell me. There are a series of alarm bells on the wall. Uh, you only press the alarm bell if you feel your safety or something's going, up, going out of, that you can't control or it's or a different situation. There'll be yep. staff on the wing here anyway, so there's not, not, nothing really to worry about. Key thing is just be sensible. Um, if you have a question, ask. However it feels, you know, because uh, you're in here to learn and that... Uh, I mean, with going into cells and things, I mean, do you still, you know, common courtesy, knock before going in oh, and yeah, say, yeah, is it knock. right if I come I in? Knock, yeah. The chaplains come face to face with serious criminals on a daily basis, and some are facing potential life sentences. Murder charge. He's still asleep. He's still asleep. Great. That's great. Thank you. Hugh's first experience of the day is on the healthcare wing and his nerves are obvious on the way to meeting the morning's first new arrival. Mark from the chaplaincy. This is um, Hugh, who's with me. He's a, uh, a trained vicar. Hey, How are you feeling? Not very good? No. And what's the offence? Uh, sexual. Okay. What um, religion are you? Um. <coughs> so would you say you're an atheist? Don't believe in anything? So would you say you're an agnostic, you're not really bothered? Yeah. That's fine. I'll leave you to it. Right, <laughs> cheers. Let's go. Obviously, um... Gentlemen, I didn't want to engage you very much, so I just needed no. to... I couldn't really draw you into the interview yeah. or anything. No, no, no. I just needed to get the information that was yeah. uh, we needed. So, when you say he's on remand, is that... Yeah, he's but, been charged or he's, he's been, been charged. convicted. Basically, the nature of the offence means that um, he has to be held in custody yeah. until that time, so that's why he'd be here. So it's until the trial. So yeah. yeah, right, let's go on and see what we can get to the next one now. For a chaplain like Mark, who's been in the role for many years, there's not much he hasn't seen or confronted. But for a student like Hugh, it's going to be a long and challenging day. Sometimes he comes over as not perhaps having the confidence in certain situations and hopefully this will boost up his confidence. And look, I went in Cardiff prison, I dealt with some quite serious things that were in Cardiff prison. They were thrown on my toes. I had to sit down and talk to new prisoners when they arrived. I had to go and visit people in a punishment block in, in a healthcare um, and I coped. I got through that and people thought it was what I did was not silly or, or off the wall. I don't have any authority. So I don't know how much you're supposed to say, oi, come on, behave yourself, get back in the cell sort of thing. Or, 
uh, it's, it's a very strange thing to get used to, how much to be authoritarian and how much not to be. Former bank manager and father of three, Steve Bunting, now in his third year, has delivered many sermons. But today is the first time that Vice Principal Stephen Roberts will hear him in the pulpit. Having learned that some of the best sermons come from personal experience, will his very personal message convince the congregation and the judge? I talk about the fact that I used to work in a bank and used to have, used to get well paid. And in some ways you've gained the whole world but you've lost your soul. And taking it across, what are the consequences of following Jesus, you know? The last words were put in together last night. I did most of it Tuesday, but then I let it fester over a few days. So the last, and well, in fact, I just changed two words in the car before I got out of the car. Last minute additions. But yeah, no, it's, I'm fairly confident it should be okay. But is Stephen's confidence really justified? I used to have to go to people's houses to ask them for loan payments if they'd missed them and see the desperate situation they were in. We used to have huge targets to sell insurance to customers which may not necessarily need it. And I felt like I was receiving money for ruining other people's lives. And I couldn't do it anymore. So I had a choice to make and the choice I made was to follow Jesus and trust that he would work out a plan for me in my life. Remember so, what does Vice Principal Stephen Roberts make of the sermon? I'm very happy with, with uh, what I've heard. I think it can be very, very effective when people talk about their own uh, experiences when preaching because um, it shows that the text has in fact spoken to them. For me, this was one of the easiest sermons I've ever written. Because as soon as I saw the passage, I was like, this sums up my life in the last 10 years. I think we've all got a question what every aspect of job, whether it's banking, doctor, teacher, whatever it is, and are we doing the best? If we're trying to follow Jesus, is, does that live out in the job that we do? Back in Cardiff prison, the challenges don't get any tougher than this. The chaplains play a special role for prisoners who are on suicide watch, offering a sympathetic ear to those at the end of their tether. Uh, Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 Because you've got time on your hands and it's difficult to actually work out. Mm. It's just frustrating. Yeah. And with him as well, he's getting older. How old is he? Yeah, uh, tool now, uh, anything has stopped me. Yeah, well that's a very positive thought. Like I come up with that close. Uh, that's your partner, is it? Yeah, I come up She's far too pretty for you, look at you. <laughs> she looks lovely. That's what you've got to live for, isn't it? That's really important, really. Keep that in, keep that in front of you when you have the silly thoughts, because... It was Wednesday I nearly come close because they only get, well, they showed up late for the visit. Yeah. It was the first visit since I've been in. And I only had 15 minutes for them, so I ran a bit off my head then. But fair enough, they got a clean ear, you listened good. So he listened to me, so I got through it. Excellent. Keep thinking positive, right? You take care of yourself. Thank you, thank you. No problem at all. The chaplains are expected to keep a close eye on vulnerable prisoners and have procedures to flag up risks of self-harm. Obviously you can see there we, we had the conversation and um, he's thinking about things in the future. He's thinking um. about um, uh, his child and his partner. And so he reacted when he came in, but he's now thinking more sensibly. So that's the sort of situation we're looking at it. Obviously there are other issues, but, and we've got to just weigh that up. But from my conversation there now, I feel in some senses he's more positively thinking and looking forward. Yeah. yeah, I just put a little yeah. comment to that effect. Yep. With the first day drawing to a close, how's Hugh coping with the overwhelming experiences of the prison? It's certainly an eye opener, and uh, I think it takes quite a bit of getting used to, to being in here. The vicar is very much still the centre of community. Um, sadly, that's been lost in the rest of society, so uh, might gain ways of bringing that back. It's the Sermon X Factor final. 
and Roz has to face a bustling city centre church with a congregation that includes the Simon Cowell of the preaching world, St Michael's Vice Principal Stephen Roberts. Roz's main concern is what she might say in the heat of the pulpit. When I get nervous I tend to revert to uh, only a few subjects and uh, shouldn't really be talked about in a pulpit. So. <laughs> you get the shakes and you feel sick and you have to live with it and get over it. Just gotta pace around beforehand, not talk to anybody. It's a bit like uh, going on for a rugby match actually. It's like you get you in your mindset your own way. Stressed and anxious. There we go. And there's just time for a final word of advice from an experienced parish priest. Just go for it. Thanks. You'll be fine. Go for it and stick with it. Stick with what you've written. You've written it. Deliver it. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. No turning back now. Stephen Roberts and the rest of the congregation are ready to hang on Roz's every word. I recently watched America's Next Top Model, which is a trashy TV programme, like a talent show to become a model. It had an episode where a marketing director came in and told these beautiful women that a word, a single word, should be what their fans and audiences relate to them with. So what do you think your word is? Are you organised, spontaneous, adaptable, creative? I wonder if any of us believe our word to be Christian, religious or faithful. I thought it went very well indeed. I mean, she was obviously nervous, but the nerves didn't, um, didn't detract from what she was doing, what she was saying. I could hear her very clearly, very audibly. You should be the best that you can be in it, and like, if you're not, then you're falling short of that marker, aren't you? You're falling short of your own potential. I'd stopped taking notes and I was listening and I was thinking about how this related to me. And so I thought, well, if she can take me out of sermon assessment mode into reflective mode, I thought, that's pretty good. It felt really rushed and I can't, rem I can't remember how it went. I can't remember. I felt like I missed pages and I felt stressed and nervous during it and I felt like completely disheartened and, yeah. There was a real passion, I thought, um, a real underlying uh, sense of speaking to people about something that mattered, that was important. But back at the college, Roz has very mixed feelings about the first term. The routine of academic study is not really what she had in mind. Her younger sister has come to take her home for the weekend, and she's got a lot of thinking to do. I can't say that I've particularly enjoyed every moment of it. Um, talked about leaving talked about staying, talked about changing stuff, being really lazy when it came to morning prayer because I got annoyed and frustrated. I haven't helped anybody since I've been here, which is rubbish because I like helping. It'd just be so much easier just to do something different. It's, yeah, itchy feet just is going to play hell. Next time, Hugh makes new friends behind the bars of Cardiff Prison all right, was he all right? Nice meeting you. Sure now? Yeah. Roz seeks an escape from college life. Gets out some pent up aggression. It's just good to have a run around, like. And Vicar to be Marcus finds hope in Merthyr. Yeah, it's quite an inspirational operation. <laughs> <laughs>